Greetings, the Astro 30 here, and today we're going to talk about negative feedback in amplifiers. And I'm no artist, this is supposed to be an amplifier and speakers, like a hi fi system. But we're going to talk about what negative feedback is in an amplifier and what it is for. But first, we need to discuss loops. When I'm talking about loops, I'm talking about whether or not we're in an open system or a closed system. This is an open loop gain amplifier, there is no feedback employed at all. So this has a high amount of gain but can distort really really early. And here is the one that most people are more familiar with if the amplifier is represented as an op amp. We have our resistive gain over here as well as our resistive feedback and this is what's called a closed loop gain system. This has less distortion but lower gain. Now, originally the negative feedback amplifier was invented by Harold Stephen Black at Bell Laboratories in 1927. And what it was to do with was to increase the amount of distance that telecommunications could be transmitted and lower its distortion. And take your standard amplifier, this is an open loop gain. We put in a small signal that we want to amplify and out this is exaggerated, comes our amplified signal but with distortion. And not only is the original input signal amplified but also so is the distortion. And the more, more gain it has the worse the distortion gets. Negative feedback is by applying either through just a resistor here, call it RF, applying part of the output signal back to our input signal to basically cancel out the distortion. So what we end up with is a nice amplified sine wave without the distortion but with a lot less gain as previously discussed. Now Negative feedback also means that the signal that's being fed back into the amplifier is the inverse of the input, so 180 degrees out of phase, basically. Now, we also want to talk about bandwidth. The problem with an open loop gain or no negative feedback is with your frequency response or its bandwidth, it's a really slow curve up and then a really fast curve off and this represents gain and this is obviously the frequency so the higher the frequency gets the more gain the amplifier produces and the even higher the frequency gets the gain starts to drop off now this might be desirable in some certain situations and here's Brian May from Queen talking about that very thing. What the Vox guys very cleverly did was just take off all the negative feedback. So you get a curve which goes up and is straight and then gradually goes into distortion. <laughs> You can hear every note very really mm. clear as crystal. If you, t if you edge it up a little bit, it'll start to go into that kind of creamy saturation, which I'll show you. So that's halfway. But yeah, if you that's go the, halfway. That's, that's sort of halfway up. That gives you the sort of... So okay. then, then the whole... Is a, you're starting like... Thanks Brian. And now this curve is without negative feedback. However, if we employ negative feedback, we almost get a flat response. Of course it's going to start rolling off at the high end and it may or may not have a, a slow roll off at the bottom end as well. It depends on the amplifier. So this is no negative feedback.
and negative feedback. So essentially what we have done is we've lowered our gain but we've improved the amplifier's bandwidth, i.e. the amount of signals it can amplify at roughly the same gain. So that's basically all negative feedback does in a nutshell. It improves distortion and improves bandwidth of the amplifier as well as controls the gain. I'm the Astro30. If you found this video interesting or helpful, please remember to subscribe, comment and like the video down below. And you can always follow me on Facebook. The link is in the description. Anyway, I'll see you in the next video. This is Astro30 saying, I only give negative feedback.